This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, because you gather us unto yourself, because nobody can come unto you except you draw him. Father, we thank you, Lord, because your word says, blessed is the man that you choose to approach you, the man that you cause, Lord, to come to you. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you chose us and you brought us unto yourself this morning. And Father, here we are, Lord, we'll open up our hearts unto you. We ask, Lord, that we speak unto all. We ask, Lord, that your word will meet us at the very point of our need. We ask, Lord, that your word will strengthen us. Your word will build up our faith, Lord. Your word will encourage us. Your word will challenge us. Your word will transform our life. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Glory be to God. This morning, quickly, turn your back with me to the book of Psalm chapter 16. Psalm 16, I read verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. This morning, I'm encouraging you, I'm exhorting you on what I call setting the Lord always before you. Let somebody say, setting the Lord always before me. So what I'm talking about is you setting the Lord, setting God before you always. I just read to you the resolution, the determination of a guy in the Bible that is called David. David wrote this Psalm 16 verse 8. And David said, I, David, I have set the law always before me. And if you know of David, how many of us have ever had anything about David in the Bible before? David was uh, the king of Israel. Now, if you remember Goliath, the giant in the Bible, it was David that killed that guy called Goliath when he was just a young guy. Now, if you talk about life experiences, if you talk about having, you know, the bad and the good, David had it both. So David was one of the people in the Bible, one of the saints in the Bible that had both the good times and the bad times. You understand? He knew, he tasted, he, he experienced what we call rejection and acceptance. He, was, he knew what it means to be treated as an outcast. He knew what it means to be homeless. There was a time he had no place. He was just moving from one wilderness to the other. Camping, sleeping in one uh, mountain cave to the other because Saul, the king of Israel, was chasing after his life. That was David. If you talk about crisis in marriage, crisis in family home, David experienced it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, do you know that in David's family, there, there came a time that his son slept with, with his own daughter, with David's daughter. And then the other brother killed that one. So David had a problem. There was even a time that his son rose up against him, plotted a coup against him, and overthrew him and chased him away from the palace. Do you understand? His son, his son Absalom, he plotted him. He actually wanted to kill him. Do you know what he did? He slept with all his father's wife, concubine, right in the open before everybody. Can you imagine that? So David, what am I telling you? David tasted life. The good life, the bad life. He knew suffering. He knew joy. He understood what it means. He experienced all the different weathers, all the different seasons of life. He had his own time of weeping. He had the time when he laughed. Now, if you read the book of Psalm, you, will, you, 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 you could see the experiences of David. He knew what it means to be high. He knew what it means to be low. He knew what it means to be happy, to feel that you're on top of the world. He knew what it means to feel depressed, sorrow, and sad. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But do you know in the midst of it all, this guy, this man called David, he had one resolution. He had something that he determined. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. 
In the good time, David said, I was looking at the Lord before me. In the bad time, he said, I had the Lord always before me. When he, it was up, he had the Lord before me. When he was low, he had the Lord before him. And look at David. In the midst of it all, he was one of the saints in the Bible. Actually, he was the only one that God said about David. He said, I have found David, a man after my heart. Look at what the Bible says about David. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 13. What am I telling you? That it does not matter your circumstances. It does not matter what you are going through. It does not matter what you are going through. The challenges that come against you. It does not matter the opposition, the adversary. You can always set the law before you. And when you set the law before you, you will not be moved. David said, I have set the law before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. In the midst of it all, one thing was sure. Do you know David made terrible mistakes in life? He fell into adultery. He killed the husband of the woman. He did all those things. But do you know, in spite of it all, he said, I set the Lord always before me. At the end of it, that was why he was still a great man. Look at what the Bible says about David. Act of Apostles chapter 13. I read from verse 22. Now, the Bible is talking about David here. Say, when he had to remove him, he raised up for them David as king. So God removed Saul, the king, for David. Now, look at what the Bible says. To whom also he gave testimony and said, Now, this is God speaking about David. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do all my will. Look at what God said about David. God said, David is a man after my own heart. That was David. David that went through all, all the seasons, all the weathers of life. That was David that committed adultery. That was David that committed murder. That was David. But God said he's a man after my heart. Do you know why? Because he set the Lord always before him. And do you know that was not all? God actually made what we call everlasting covenant with David. God told David, there will never be a time that your son will, not, will cease to be a king in Israel. And do you know that when Jesus came, Jesus was actually called the son of David. Do you know what angel Gabriel said in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 32? He told Mary, he told Mary, he said, look, now you are going to give back to a son, his name shall be called Jesus. He's going to be great. He's going to be called the son of the highest. And he said, God is going to give to him the throne of his father, David. The people, they called Jesus the son of David. You remember the blind man? When, when, when Jesus was passing by, he began to cry, Oh, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy upon me. What am I telling you? That even Jesus was called the son of David. And he was a guy that went through ups and downs in life. He saw both sides of life. He experienced both sides. He tasted both sides. Now, what am I saying? There is nothing that you are going through that you cannot set God before you. Because David did it. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. While he was going through good time, he set the Lord before him. When he had prosperity, he set the Lord before him. When he had riches and wealth, he set the Lord before him. When all things were going well, he had God before him. And when the opposite happened, when he had nothing, when he lost everything that he had, he lost his son, he lost the palace, he lost the wives, and he was just homeless, running from one place to the other. Do you know what? He still set the Lord always before him. And this morning, that's what I want to encourage you also to do. I want you to encourage you, like David, set God always before you. No matter the seasons of life you find yourself, when you are in the valley, set God before you. When you're on the mountain, set God before you. When you are having things are working well, set the law before you. When things are rough and tough and things are not happening the way you want it, do you know what? Still set the law before you. What does it mean to set the law before you? Why should you set the law before you? How can you practically, like David, set the law before you in spite of your experience, in spite of your challenge, in spite of whatever comes your way? That's what I want to share with you briefly this morning. Are you ready for it? All right. So what does it mean to set the law before you? Because it is what God wanted to do. It is your responsibility. Now, let's quickly look at the Bible. That Psalm chapter 16 verse 8, our text, the book of Psalm chapter 16 verse 8, what I want to do is that I'm going to read this Bible, uh, this, this text of the Bible, in different Bible rendition of versions. One of the ways to understand what the Bible is saying is to try to read different translations, different versions of the Bible. Psalm 1, 6, 16, verse 8. I read the New King James. David said, I have set the Lord 
always before me. Because it's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. The reason why David was not destroyed, why he was, he was not overthrown, why he was not shaken was because he said the Lord always before him. You also can do that. So what does it mean to set the law before you? Let's read this same verse of the Bible in different Bible versions. I'm reading from Revised Standard Version. It said, I keep the law always before me. Keep the law always before me. That's what it means. So to set the law before you means you keep the law before you. You know, just like when you set a goal, you set your pursuit, your ambition, and then you... Stay focused on it. You keep looking at it. That's what it means. So you, when you keep the Lord always before you, it doesn't matter what happened to you, your eyes are fixed on God. That's what it means. Now, look at what another version of the Bible says. The Bible in basic English said, I have put the law before me at all times. Because it's at my right hand, I will not be moved. So to set the law before you means you put the law before you at all times. Do you know what that means? You give God the priority in your life. You make God first in everything you do. God does not come second. Do you understand? You don't put anything ahead of God, not even your own self. You don't put any man. You don't put your relationship, your work, your job, your career, your business, money, whatever you have, your loved one, your children. You don't put them ahead of God. That is, in your life, God is number one. Do you understand? Now, you are ready to please God and displease anyone. That's what it means to set God before you. It means God is my number one. God is my priority. Everything revolves around God. God is at the center of my life. That's what it means. I put God ahead of myself. Whatever God says, that is the final. Whatever God wants, that is what I want. Now that's what it means. Let's read further. Look at another Bible translation. Now this all my Bible said, I keep the Lord in mind always. Because it's at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Now, so, to set the law before you means to keep the Lord in mind always. Hello? Now, do you know many of us, we keep people in mind? No? Those who have really hurt us. Those who have really betrayed us. Those who have disappointed us. We keep them in mind. We don't forget anything about them. We don't forget anything about what they have done to us. How they've treated us. But do you know what? That's not good for your health. Now, who you should always keep in mind is God. So God said, keep me in mind. What you should always keep in mind is God's goodness for your life. God's love for you. God's miracles in your life. What God has done. So to set the Lord always before you means you keep God in your mind always. You think about God. You think about God's goodness. You think about God's work. Do you understand? You keep the word of God in your mind. Whatever you read in the Bible, you keep it in your mind. You treasure it. You ponder over it. You meditate in it. That's what God wants for your life. And when you do that like David, you will not be shaking. Heaven may fall down. Do you understand? The world may fall apart. But do you know what? You will still be standing. God will establish you. So, to send the Lord before you means, I keep God always in my mind. Now, look at what it means for that. Look at another Bible translation. Look at what it says here. This one is, it said, I keep my eyes always on the law. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. That's uh, uh, international Bible. It said, I keep my eyes always on the law. So to set the Lord away before you means what? You keep your eyes on the law. Hello? Are you with me this morning? Do you know what it means when you keep your eyes on something? Have you ever seen people who stare at you? <laughs> they stare at you so much that you yourself wonder, is there anything wrong with my dress? <laughs> you understand? You wonder because they just refuse to blink their eye. They just fix their gaze on you. That's what God wanted you to do. God wanted you to fix your eyes on the law. Are you listening to me? Oh, somebody is speaking evil about you. Somebody is gossiping about you. Someone is peddling rumors about you. Don't bother about them. Don't give your attention to them. Give your attention to the law. Things are not working well. Now, don't give your attention to the problem. Give attention to God. Someone say, yeah, too. Oh, that's fine. But there is a God that loves you. Give your attention to God. So, to set the Lord away before you means you keep your eyes always on the Lord. Are you listening to me? You don't keep your eyes on any man. You don't bother yourself so much about them. Keep your eyes on the Lord. That's what David did. That's why David, at the end of his life, God said, this is a man after my heart, and God established his throne forever. Do you know why? Because he kept his eyes on the Lord always. That's what God wanted to do. God wanted to keep your eyes always. Fix your eyes on the Lord, not on man. 
Now, look at, look at what it means to keep the Lord always. Now, this New Living Translation said, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he's right beside me. So, to, to keep the Lord, to set the Lord away before you means to know that God is always with you. Do you know what that means? It doesn't matter who is not with you. When God is always with you, the job will be done. So to always know that God has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. That's what it means to set the Lord always before you. It means, I know God is always for me. I know God is always with me. God will never leave me. He will never reject me. He will never forsake me. People may reject you. Are you listening to me? People may say, no, we don't want to associate with you. We don't want to have anything to do with you. That's fine. Now, don't bother yourself about them. Don't give them your attention. Give your attention to the law and know that God is always with you. That's what it means to set the law before you. Look at what the Bible says here. Now, this is New English translation. It said, I constantly trust in the law because it's at my right hand. I will not be upended. That is, I will not be destroyed. I will not be overthrown. I constantly trust in the law. So, when the Bible says, set the law before you, do you know what it means? Constantly do what? Trust in the law. Not in yourself, not in your ability. Do you know some of us, we have so much confidence in ourselves rather than in God. We trust so much what we can do, but not what God can do for us. That's not a good thing. That means you are not setting the law before you. When you set the law before you, you trust in the law. Are you listening to me? Even when something happens, and to you as a woman being, there is nothing you can do about it. I don't know whether you have been in a situation like that. I've been in a situation that womanly possible, I don't have anything I could do. I can't change the situation. But I know there is a God that with him, nothing is difficult, nothing is hard, nothing is impossible. When you put your trust in God, do you know what you are doing? You are setting the Lord always before you. So to, 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 to constantly trust in the Lord, that is what it means. So when I say set the Lord always before you, I'm saying constantly do what? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Put your confidence in the Lord. Have faith in God. Are you listening? Things are not going well. Have confidence in God that He will change things for you. Things are not going to remain like this. Are you listening to me? Have faith in God. Have trust in God that He can change your situation. He can set to you. He can give you your heart desire. He can take you to your goals in life. He can give you what you are asking for. He will answer your prayer. And you say, people may mock you today. They may reproach you. They may laugh at you. But you tell them, God is not yet true with me. God is working in me. God is working on my life. God is handling my case. He will turn everything around for me. I have confidence in God. Do you know what? That is what it means to set the Lord always before me. So when David said, I set the Lord always before me, what he's saying is, I constantly trusted in the Lord. When I was in the valley, I trusted in the law. When I was on the mountain, I trusted in the law. When I was in the palace, I trusted in the law. When I was chased into the forest, I trusted in the law. When I stood before Goliath, I trusted in the law. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Are you with me this morning? So, to constantly trust in the Lord is to set the Lord always before you. Now, look at this. Look, look at what the Message Bible call it. This is awesome. Psalm 16 verse 8. I'm reading from Message Bible. It says, Day and night... I stick with God. Let somebody say, stick with God. He said, day and night, I stick with God. I have got a good thing going. I'm not letting go. That's wonderful translation. Do you know what he said? He said, I stick with God day and night. So to set the Lord away before you means you stick with God. You don't turn back. You don't think of going back. Oh, somebody says something. Somebody look at me in one way. I don't think I will, I will return to, to, to church anymore. No, that's, that, that's not the right thing to do. Stick with God. Oh, look, look, look at it. Things are not happening. I don't think I can continue to pray anymore. No, friend. Stick with God. So the Bible says, stick with God. That is what it means to set the law before. It means you just cleave to God. You just hold fast unto God. Nothing is going to let you go. You are going to stick with God until you leave this world and meet with God face to face in heaven. So sticking with God, staying with God, that's what it means. David said, he said, I have a good thing going. I'm not going to let it go. It's a good thing to have God as your father. Isn't it? It's a good thing to have Jesus as your Savior. It's a good thing to know God. It's a good thing to wake up in the morning and pray and thank God and read your Bible. Stick with that. Stick with that. Answer to your prayer may be delayed, but listen to me. God is a faithful God. He will answer you. He will come true for you. Don't let friends talk you out of God. 
Don't let your family talk you out of God. Don't let people talk you out of God. Stick with God. That's what I'm saying this morning. That's what it means to set the Lord always before you. No. Now, being a Christian, being a child of God does not mean it's going to be bed of roses all the time. Do you understand? Now, there are seasons of life. There are weathers of life. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? All through my life, I've been through different seasons of life. Time will not permit you to tell you things that I've experienced. I've had my own share of trouble in life. But you know what? Right from the time I got to know Jesus, I made up my mind, I'm going to stick with him. It doesn't matter what I have. It doesn't matter what I don't have. Do you know what? I'll stick with him. I'll stick with him. And that's what I wanted to do. That's the resolution I wanted to make this morning. That's the determination. Do you know what? It's going to pay you in the long end. Because God is a faithful God. He will reward you. He will come true for you. So, setting God before you means sticking with God. Always sticking with God always. Look at how good news put it. I'm always aware of the Lord's presence. He is near. Nothing can shake me. I'm always aware of the Lord's presence. Do you know what? Setting the Lord before you always means you are aware that God is always with you. When you are alone in your house, know that God is what? God is with you. When no one is around, know what? God is with you. When you are alone, you know, and you are going through a dark place, know that even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. When you are in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trial, and you are confused, you have nobody, nobody seems to care, nobody seems to know what you are going through. Now listen to me, know that God is aware. God is aware. And you also be aware of God's presence with you. That God has said, it will never leave you, it will never forsake you. That's what David knew. Even when he fell into sin, even when he made terrible decision and mistake, he knew that God was still with him. That's why he said, I set the Lord always, always. Not when I did what was right, no. So even when you do what is wrong, know that God is with you. Because he said, he will not leave you nor forsake you. Now let's look at this scripture. He said, I always remember that the Lord is with me. He's here, close by my side. Let some say, God is close by my side. He says, so nothing can defeat me. Can you see David? He said, I said the Lord always before me. God is always with me. God is close by my side. So nothing can defeat me. So what I'm saying this morning is that you need to set the Lord before you. It is your personal responsibility. It is what you've got to do for yourself. Are you listening to me? Now, nobody is going to do that for you. The Bible says you should be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. So it is you. It is your responsibility to set God before you, to fix your eyes on the Lord, to give your attention to the Lord, to know that God is always with you, that God is not always for you. It is your responsibility as a Christian, as a child of God, to stick with God, to stay with God. And when you do that, that is setting the Lord always before you. Now, the question, why should you set the Lord before you? Why should I just focus on God always? When the going is good, when the going is not good, why should I fix my eyes on the Lord? Why should I just give my attention to God and not to those who are mocking me, laughing at me, or despising me? Why is it that it's only God that I should mind and focus in life? Let's look at what the Bible says. Number one, now, you must set the Lord always before you because that is what God commanded you to do. So when you set the law before you, do you know what? Then you are obedient to God. It means you are obeying what God said. Look at what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Why should you set the law? Why should you put the Lord always before you? Why should you constantly trust the law? It is because that is what God asks you to do. That's what God commanded us to do. Isaiah chapter 45. The book of Isaiah chapter 45. Look at what the Bible says, verse 18. For thus says the Lord who created the heaven, verse 18, who is God, who formed the heart and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord, and there is no, no other. Now, look at what it says in verse 21 now. The same Isaiah 45, look at it, verse 21. Tell and bring forth your case, yes, let them take counsel together, who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have I, have not I, the law? And there is no other God beside me. A just God. God say, I'm a just God. And a savior. There is no beside me. Look at verse 22 now. God say, look to me and be saved. Do you have that in your Bible? 
God says what? Look to me. Do you know what that means? Focus your eyes on me. Put your trust in me. Put your confidence in me. So the reason why you go to do that is because God asked you to do it. And do you know what? When you obey God, you enjoy the blessings of obedience. So God said, look to me. Look to me and be saved. Are you going through a time? God said, don't look to friends. Don't look to, to, to any man. They will disappoint you. Look to God. Trust in God. Put your confidence in God. He said, look to me and be saved. All you hands of the earth. For I am God. And there is no other. God said, I am God. So look to me. I'm the only one that is constant. I'm the only one that is faithful. I'm the only one that is reliable. I'm the only one that is dependable. I don't know whether you've been in a situation. I've been in such a situation when you really want to help someone. And you listen to me, but you don't have the means to do it. You love to help. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You love to help. It's in your mind, but you don't have the power. So what can you do? But listen to me. God always has the power to help. God always has the strength here because he's God. He's the almighty God. He made everything. He has everything under his control. So he said, look to me. Set me before you. Fix your eyes on me. Trust in me constantly. Depend on me. Rely on me. That's what God said. So the reason why you've got to do it is because God commanded you to do it. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. Do you know what? When you don't trust God, when you don't set God before you, you're actually bringing a curse upon yourself. Look at what the Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17. Look at it from verse 5. You need to set God before you because God commanded you to do it. And because God is the only one reliable, dependable, faithful, He's the only one that will not fail you, that will not let you down. Jeremiah chapter 17, I read from verse 5. Thus says the Lord, cause is the man who trusts in man. Can you see the word here? Yeah? So when you trust in man, whether it's yourself, whether it's somebody else, and then you just put your whole trust, your whole confidence, the Bible says that's not a good thing. That's a cause. You, you, you release cause upon yourself. Now, because God wants you to trust only in him, say, cause is the man who trusts in man. And make flesh, that is, make woman being his strength. Whose heart departs from the law? When, a man, when you allow your heart to depart from God, and then you trust in your ability, you trust in your strength, you trust in your wisdom, the Bible says then you are under a curse. You bring God's curse upon yourself. Now look at verse 6. For it shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good come. Do you know what? When you don't set God before you, you miss God's blessings. You don't see when God's good. When God wants to run miracle in your life, you miss it. Because you are not looking unto God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Many of us will miss good things like that. Because we trust in ourselves. We trust in our wisdom, in our ability. It is only when you trust in God that you will not miss what God has in store for you. Now look at what he says. He said, but shall inhabit the path places in the wilderness. In a subtle land which is not inhabited. Now look at verse 7 very well. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17. Look at verse 7. He said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And whose hope is the Lord. When you put your trust in the Lord. When you set the Lord before you. When you look only unto the Lord. When you fix your mind on the Lord. The Bible says, you are blessed. God's blessing will come your way. God's blessing will flow to you. Now look at verse 8. He said, for it shall be like a tree. Planted by the waters. We spread out its roots by the river. And we not fear when it comes, but its leaves will be green, and we not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will it cease from yielding fruit. When you constantly trust in the law, the Bible says God will ensure that you have a continuous flow of his grace, flow of his goodness, of his mercy, of his blessings in your life. So God wanted to trust him. Do you know why? Because it is for your own good. When you trust God, there's a constant flow of God's favor, flow of God's goodness, flow of God's blessings in your life. But you, when you trust in man, you miss it. So that's why you need to trust in God. That's why you need to put your whole trust, your confidence in God. Do you know what? Because there is nothing in this world that is permanent. If you give trust in a man and you put all your trust, all your confidence in man, guess what? The man may wake up one morning and say, I'm sorry. I don't love you anymore. I have another lady. <laughs> it happens. It happens. That's why God said, don't put your trust in man. Don't put a man ahead of God. The woman may say, I'm tired of you. I think I have someone that is richer than you. I have someone that is that's more intelligent, that, that is more handsome than you. 
Now, so that's why it is only God that is faithful. It is only God that will always be there for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And so that's why God said, put your trust in him. Do you know what? You should not put your trust in, even in riches, in money. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, riches, money, they can grow wings and fly. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. Look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. The book of Proverbs 23. That's why God said, don't trust in riches. Don't trust in riches. Don't put your confidence. I'm sitting to verse 10. The Bible says, do not trust in oppression, nor value up in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Look at Proverbs 23, verse 5. Whatever you have, don't put your trust in them. Is it a car? Is it a good house? Is it money you have in the bank? Anything can happen. Haven't you had bank go bankrupt? And they say, we are sorry, we lost all the money. <laughs> what can you do? Haven't you seen people that have a whole house and then it goes in flame and that's the end of it? And they don't have anything anymore. So there is nothing that you can trust. There's nothing you can put your heart and put ahead of God and set before you because nothing in this world is permanent. Do you know what? A time is coming when God will destroy everything in the world with fire. Nothing will be left. So it is foolishness to trust in anything of this world. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 5. The Bible says, will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings and they fly away like an eagle towards heaven. The Bible says riches fly, money fly. <laughs> you can lose it. They can go away from you. So don't trust in your riches. Whatever God has given to you, the Bible says, don't trust in it. Don't put your hope in it. Don't fix your mind on it. Don't let your life depend on it. Don't trust in it. It's only God that is reliable. Heaven and I will pass away, but listen to me, only God remains. Only God survives. Only his word endures forever. So God is the only one that you should trust. Now, let me tell you another reason why you have to constantly set the Lord before you, trust in him, look up unto him, and make him your priority, your goal in life. Do you know what? Fixing your mind on God is an antidote against weariness and discouragement in life. Now, when you trust in the Lord constantly, do you know what it will do? It will save you from discouragement, from fear, from worry, from anxiety, from depression in life. Look at what David said. Let's go back to Psalm 16. Look at Psalm 16. I read from verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Now look at what he said in verse 9. Therefore, that is because of thee. For this reason, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Verse 10. For you will not leave my soul in show, nor will you allow your only one to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. David said, in the midst of it all, the reason why my heart is glad is because I know God is for me. I set the Lord always before me. You don't want to suffer depression all your life. Do you know what? Put your trust in God alone. You don't want to, your, 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 your mood to change with the seasons and the weathers of life. Do you know what? Fix your minds on God. That's what David did. He said, I was glad. He said, my flesh, my body rejoiced. I had joy. Do you know why he said? Because I said the Lord before me. I just fixed my, do you know what? If you put your mind only on God, and you make God your priority, and you stick with God, and you resolve in your mind, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to fix my eyes on God. God is my confidence. God is my treasure. Do you know what? It doesn't matter what you lose. You won't lose your life with it. You won't lose your joy with it. You won't lose your peace with it. Do you know why? Because your joy, your peace, is not dependent on the things that you are, but it's dependent only on God. And God will always be there for you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? If I say, okay, uh, I have this thing and this is my source of joy. Oh, this device gives me joy. What about when I lose it? What about if it is not working again? What happened to my joy? What happened to my peace? That's why God said, put your trust only in me. Do you know what? Because God will always be there for you. He will not reject you. And so you will always have joy. You will always have peace. You will always have strength when you put your trust and confidence in God. When you fix your eyes only on God. Look at what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at it from verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnare us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and what? And the finisher of our faith. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I want you to look at verse 3 now. Are you with me? Look at verse 3 now. For consider him. I told you last week the word consider me to fix your mind on something. To meditate on something constantly. He said, consider Jesus. Fix your mind on Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Set Jesus as your example. Set Jesus as your model, as your standard. He said, consider him who will endure such hostility from sinner against himself. Lest you become weary. Can you see the word? And discouraged in your soul. Do you know what? The Bible is saying, if you don't fix your mind on Jesus, you will be discouraged. That's why when God says, look unto me, when God says, look unto Jesus, it is to keep your soul from discouragement. If you look at what is going on in your life, if you fix your mind on just what you are going through, do you know what? A time is coming, you're going to say, am I the only one in the world? Am I the only one the devil is fighting? Why are things not working for me? You'll be discouraged. When you sit down and all you could do is to meditate on things that are not going well in your life. That's why God said, meditate on Jesus. Fix your mind on Jesus. Think about his goodness all the time. Don't fix your mind on what is not going on well. Don't fix your mind on what you don't have. What about things that you have others don't have? So, to keep your soul from discouragement, from sorrow, from depression, God said, look unto me. Fix your eyes on me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, fix your mind on Jesus. It will keep your soul from discouragement. Do you understand? If you look unto someone and just fix your mind, what about when that person disappoints you? What about when you heard that that person says something nasty about you? You'll be discouraged. That is why when we come to church, look at me, you don't look at anybody. You look unto Jesus alone. You fix your mind on Jesus. Oh, somebody may look at you somehow. No, don't mind them. It's only Jesus you mind. So set Jesus before you. He's the one that called you. He's your savior. He's your Lord. He's your provider. He's the one that will help you. He's the one that will take you to heaven. When you die, you go to heaven. He's the one you will see. So fix your mind on him where you are now. It will keep your soul from discouragement. When you keep looking at people, they will discourage you. So that's why the Bible says, look unto Jesus. Do you know what? Now listen to this. Whatever you give attention to in life, do you know what it does? It gives direction to your life. If I keep looking at something and I give my whole attention, do you know what will happen? Whatever you give attention to in life will begin to direct your life. Whatever you constantly look at, do you know what happens? It grows bigger in your heart. It grows bigger. Do you know that when you look at someone, at first when you, when you just glance at someone, you don't see everything about that person. But fix your eyes, fix your attention on that person. You see every little detail about that person. About the clothes, about his looks. You see what is wrong. You see what is not in place. Do you know why? Because you fix your eyes on that person. He begins to control. It goes bigger. You have a bigger picture. The same way, when you fix your eyes on Jesus, do you know what? Jesus will grow bigger in your mind. You begin to see more of God's goodness in your life. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, do you know what? Now, the thought of Jesus will begin to direct your life. You begin to think about Jesus all the time. When you keep thinking on the mind, the word of Jesus, you keep looking at the word of Jesus, you believe the word of Jesus, you meditate on the word of Jesus, do you know what? The goodness of God, the glory of God will continue to flow into your life. So that's why God said, look unto me. Fix your mind on Jesus. Let Jesus guide your life. Because whatever you look at, whatever you fix your mind on, whatever you look onto the longest, controls your life the most. Now listen to this. When I keep looking at my problem, what I'm going through, look at it, everybody hates me, nobody loves me, everybody has forsaken me, everybody hurts me. Now look at what will happen to me. After a while, that is all you'll be saying. Because your, your thought, what you are thinking, what, what, what you keep looking at, begin to form the basis of your talk. And after a while, it begins to show you what you say. That's why when anybody asks you, how are you doing? The next thing you talk about is what you are going to do. You know why? Because that is what you think about all the time. And after a while, it begins to affect your emotion as well. Now, you feel sorrow, you feel sad, you feel discouraged. You don't even feel like continuing life anymore. Why? Now, before somebody think of suicide, do you know what? They've thought about their life, about their situation, and they have come to a conclusion that it does not worth living anymore. It's because they've taken too long thinking about things that are happening to them, things that are not working in their life. 
Now, God is asking me to tell you this morning, don't waste your time sitting down and brooding over and pondering on things that are not working, things that are not good about your life. What about things that are good about your life? What about things that are going well with your life? Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Do you know that when you look at your life, there are thousands and thousands and millions of people that your life is far better than them? Go to remote villages in, in Africa, in India. You thank God that you are here. <laughs> you thank God for the clothes that you have. Some, they don't even have anything. Are you listening to what I've been to villages to give them clothes that their children, they don't have anything. They only have pint, nothing, no shoe, nothing whatsoever. We've been to a place that it is when people come to the church that we give them shoe and sandals and slippers to wear. They came to church barefooted, nothing. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? And you are complaining that you have just only two pair of shoes. Don't fix your mind on things that you don't have. When you do that, it will discourage you. When you keep thinking about your problem, your problem keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And do you know what? It grows bigger than God in your mind. And you will think, oh, this is too much. Even God cannot help me. That's why God said, set me no way before you. Fix your eyes on the law. Fix your attention on the law. When you fix your mind on the law, it will change your life. It will change your situation. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That's what happened to David. He set the Lord always before him. Now, just before I close, I want us to go back to our Bible reading this morning. How can you set the law before you? Pastor, I know it is good to set the Lord always before me, but how do I do it? How do I fix my mind only on God? How can I do that? In spite of what is happening to me, I will stick with God. I will trust in the Lord. I will keep thinking about God. I will give God my attention. I will make God a priority in my life. I have so many things going wrong at the same time. How can I still fix my eyes on God? Things are not going the way I want it. How can I still focus on God? How can I still fix my attention on God? That's what I want to show you practically this morning. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And let's learn from this guy called Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. How to practically set your mind on God. Set God always before you. How you can always focus on God no matter what is falling apart, no matter what is working or what is not working. Second Chronicle chapter 20. Look at it. I read from verse 1. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Hamon and others with them beside the Ammonite came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Verse 2. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. They are in Azazon, Tamar. Now, look at what happened to this guy. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. He was a young guy. He loved God. He was serving God. Are you listening to me? He believed in God. But suddenly, three nations, they just rose against him. Can you imagine that just one morning, somebody just knock at you and say, wow, wow, you are, in, you are in deep trouble. People have come against you. And the Bible says, multitude rose against him. Do you understand? And you just see everybody is around you and everybody is against you. Can you imagine? Only you and everybody in this community is fighting against him. You know, that's a real trouble. That's exactly what happened to this guy. Everybody just rose up against him. And the Bible said, the multitude, they gather. Look at what they said to him in verse, in verse 2. Then some came and told Joseph, saying, a great multitude, not one person, not one city, not one nation, a great multitude is coming against you. They are not coming to greet you. They are coming to fight you. They are coming to kill you. They are coming to destroy you. They are coming to take away everything that you have ever had. But look at Joseph. I wanted to see how in spite of that threat, how in spite of the battle, how in spite of the multitude, Jehoshaphat set God before him. He fixed his eyes on the Lord. And as, as a sister read through the Bible reading, God gave him the victory. Do you know what? He didn't even have to fight in the battle. God set all his enemies against one another and they killed themselves. All that they did in the battle was to gather the spoils of war. He didn't fight. How did he do it? Now look at verse 3 now. Number one, if you will always serve the Lord always before you, then you must learn to pray and to fast always. Learn to pray always. You must learn to pray. Now, now look at Joseph. Look at verse 3. I don't want you to miss it. Look at, let's learn from this guy. He has multitude rose against him, but he fixed his mind on God. How did he do it? Look at verse 3. And Joseph had fear. He was scared. They just told him and he was afraid. But listen to me. He quickly did something. 
Are you in verse 3? Let's look at it together. And Joseph had fear and said himself, he said, the word said means to position himself, to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from the city of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now look at, look at what this guy did. Immediately he heard that the enemies had gathered against him. Do you know what he did? The Bible said he just rose up to pray. And he called all the people on him and said, let's fast, let's pray, let's ask the Lord for help. Now listen to this. The reason why the Bible encouraged you to pray all times uh, in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, verse 18, uh, verse 17. Now, to pray without ceasing is because whenever you pray, do you know what? It sets your mind on God again. Now, maybe there are trouble. Listen to me. Things are falling apart. Things are, are not going right. You are worried. You are troubled. If you can pray in the midst of it and you say, I'm just going to pray. And then you kneel down and pray. Do you know what? Your mind focuses, refocuses on God again. Is that not right? When you pray, what do you do? You look unto God. That's what prayer is. Prayer means, Lord, I depend on you. God, I need your help. I cannot handle it alone. Prayer take your mind off yourself. That's what prayer do. Prayer fix your mind on God. That's why you need to pray. That's why the Bible encourages you to pray without ceasing. What does simply mean? Look unto God without ceasing. Whenever there is trouble, what should you do? Pray. Because when you pray, it takes your mind away from your trouble. It puts your mind on God. It focuses your mind on God and says, yes, I know my God is bigger than this problem. I know my God is greater than this situation. I know my God is stronger than my enemies. I know God will help me. God will say to me, God will fight for me. That's what prayer does. Prayer refocuses your mind on God. Now listen to this. If you don't pray always, you cannot set God always before. You cannot keep your mind on God always. Because it is what prayer does for you. So when you pray, especially when you fast, fasting abstinence from food, Lord, I'm not going to eat food today. I'm just going to pray, maybe for the next seven hours. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. Do you know what that is doing for you? It's, it's changing your mind. It's, it's turning your mind to God. What he's doing to you is that he's, he's refocusing your mind to God. Because fasting means you humble yourself to seek God. That's what fasting means. Fasting means God. I, I'm not going to trust myself. I'm not going to trust in anyone. I'm going to trust in God. So when you pray, when you fast, you are exercising your mind. You are telling your mind, look unto God. That's what prayer does to you. Look at what the Bible says. And that's why you see Joseph, that's the first thing he did. The Bible says when he had, even though he was afraid, what did he do? He began to pray and he called for fasting. If your mind is moving away from God, that's the time to pray. That's the time to fast. When you find yourself trusting in yourself, trusting in another man, oh, that's a dangerous part. That's the time to pray. When you pray, no, prayer do this to you. It takes your confidence away from yourself and put your confidence in God. Because when you pray, what do you do? You look unto God for answers. You look unto God for help. You look unto God to come true. That's why you pray. So you cannot... Trust God always if you don't pray. Learn to pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Look at David. The reason why David, David set God before him was because he's a man of prayer all the time. Look at what David says here. The book of Psalm 55. Pray. Learn to pray. Don't let a day go without you pray. Are you listening to me? When you are at home, pray. When you're on the street, you are walking, pray. Pray. You can pray in your heart without anybody hearing what you are saying. God sees your thought. God knows what you are thinking. Are you listening to me? When you are going through hard time, without even opening your mouth, you can pray. You can pray. Pray. Because once you pray, your mind is turning towards God. That's what it means. Look at what David did here. Psalm 55. The book of Psalm 55 from verse 16. Psalm 55 from verse 16. Now this is David. He said, as for me, I will call upon God. David said, as for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning. Can you see David? Evening and morning and afternoon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. That is how David said the Lord always before him. He said, evening, morning, noon, I am praying. Asking God to help me. Lord, this is my marriage. This is my relationship. I don't know what else to do. Help me. Do you know what? That is what it means to set the Lord always before you. What you are telling God, I'm not trusting in myself. I'm not trusting in my ability to attract the right person. Lord, I'm trusting. 
Not in my wisdom, but in you, O oh God. That's what prayer does. So whenever you pray, you are telling God, it is you that I'm trusting. That's why you pray. That's why you should fast. That's why you should call upon God. Because that is what will set your mind on God. When I pray, do you know what? That is setting God before me always. Everything I do, I call God before I do it. I commit my ways unto God. I ask God for wisdom. I ask God to guide me. I ask God to help me. Even when things are falling apart, I tell God, you can still do something. Even when the doctor says, sorry, we can't help. Even when the expert, the professionals, when they say, sorry, there's nothing we can do. And then you go back and pray and say, Lord, you can do something. Because you are my creator. You are my father. And you love me. Do you know what? That will set your mind on God. That will fix your mind on God. So we fix our mind. We train our mind to trust in God, to, 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 to focus on God when we pray, when we pray. You want to trust in God always, learn to pray always. Because when you pray, then you wait for God to answer. Is that not? That is trust. That is confidence in God. Number two, look at what Jehoshaphat did. So the first thing that Jehoshaphat did was to pray and then to fast. He called people to pray. He called people to fast. And then they fixed their mind. The multitudes are coming. The enemies were coming. But do you know what? They went to the house of God and they began to pray. Look at the second thing they did. The same second Chronicles chapter 20. I read from verse 5. Then Joseph has stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new call. So they went to the church to pray. Hallelujah. When things are not going well, that's actually the time to come to God. That's the time to come to the house of God. That's not the time to run away from church. Are you listening to me? That's actually the time to come. That's what Joseph had did. When the trouble came, he ran to God. He ran to the church. He ran to the house of God. Then look at what he now said. And said, Oh Lord God of our Father, are you not, you, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nation? And in your hand is there no power and might? So that no one is able to withstand you. Verse 7. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendant of Abraham, your friend forever? So what was Joseph doing? Joseph began to recollect the greatness and the goodness of God. If you will always set the law before you, do you know what? You must keep a track record of God's goodness in your life. That's how to set the law always before you. Remember God always. Remember the greatness of God. Don't let anything become so great to you that does not allow you to remember that God is greater than that. Think on God's greatness. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so, oh, something just happened. There's a challenge. There's a problem. Oh, there's a terrible diagnosis. You just got a result from the doctor. Now, listen to this. Now, listen to this. What you do is this. Remember the greatness of God. Remember that with God, nothing is hard or difficult. Remember that God has all the power. Remember that God loves you. And do you know what? Remember what God has done for you, what God has done in your life, what God has done with your family in the time past. That's what Jehoshaphat did. That's how they set their mind on God. Do you know what? He just began to recollect the goodness of God. He said, God, are you not the God that rule over the nation? You are stronger. You are greater than this enemy. You are multitude has come against me. But God, you are much more than the multitude. And he began to remind God, say, God, I know what you did for my fathers. I know what you did for all. You chased away people. And then you gave us their land. You gave us this inheritance. That's how to set the Lord always before you. Don't ever forget what God has done. Do you know many of us, we easily forget what God has done for us. We easily forget the last time we pray and God answered our prayer. But now God is taking too long in answering this prayer. So we are angry. We are bitter. We are discouraged. Listen to me. If you want to fix your mind on God, then don't ever forget what God has done for you. Don't forget. Remind yourself always. As a matter of fact, keep the record of it. Keep the record of it. You know many don't remember God when they go in his school. But when things are tough and rough, they say, but where is God? Oh! <laughs> That's what Joseph did. Joseph began to remember things that God has done. Look at what David did. That's, that's, that's how David kept the Lord always before him. Look at what he says in the book of Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Don't ever forget the goodness of God. 
Don't ever forget that God loves you so much. He sent his son to die for your sins on the cross. Don't ever forget that God loves you and he will always love you. He will never stop loving you. He will never stop. Now that is how to set your mind on God. When you are troubled, when your mind is, is on something else, when you, your, 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 your thoughts are scattered, how do you fix your thoughts again on God? Remember the greatness of God. Remember the goodness of God. Remember what God has done for you. Look at what David said. Psalm 103 from verse 1. Now this is David. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Look at what David said. Forget not what? All his benefit. Then he began to list what God has done. He said, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles? That is how to fix your mind on God. Do you know what? Remember the goodness, recollect it. Don't ever forget it at all. Don't let your, now listen to this, don't let your present trials, don't let your present challenges make you forget how God has helped you in the past. Don't ever forget how you are at the point of death and God rescue you. Don't ever forget how God sent someone to help you when you thought there was no help. How God made a way for you when there was no way. How God came through for you when you thought all was lost, all hope was lost. Don't ever forget that. Do you know what? Whenever there is a challenge, whenever there is a problem, when I want to pray, I don't just make, the first thing I try to do is to remind myself of what God has done before in my life. I, used to, I remind myself what God has done before in my family. How I was in a similar situation and God came through and God helped. How I pray for help in the past and God helped. How I ask God for help and he provided help. And do you know what? Once you can remember that, it strengthens your heart. It fix your mind on God and something tells you if God did it then, he will do it again now. Again now. Fix your mind on God. How do you do it? Never allow yourself, never allow your mind to forget what God has done before. That's what Joshua did. Joshua began to remember and he began to announce and say it before God and to the people what God has done before. He said, do you know, this is not the first time the enemy will rise against us. There was a time some people rose against us. God defeated them. God gave us victory. And do you know what that did? He took their eyes, their mind away from the multitude that was coming. And put their minds on God. Fix their mind on God. That's how they got the victory. You always can always have victory in life. When you put your minds on God. When you fix your mind. When you let your thoughts stay on God. Don't let your thoughts be. Your mind. Don't, your attention. Don't let it be on what the devil is doing. Don't let it be on what is not working well. Whatever things that have worked well before in your life. Remember those things. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know that some people will do just anything to be where you are today? Look at, think about things you can thank God for. Look around in your heart. Don't, now listen to this. The devil wants to remind you of things that you don't have. Okay? So that you'll be discouraged. So that you will despise what God has done. So that you will look at other people and say, this one is like God loved them more than me. No. But do you know what you do? When you wake up in the morning, look around you. Look at what God has done for you. Look at things that you have. Are you listening? Do you know that there's no amount of money anybody can have to buy a child in the market? There's no grocery store where they sell babies. Is there anywhere? Nowhere. Do you know there are some rich people that are really barren? They try all they could to be pregnant, to have children. They don't. But you have a child. You don't pay anything to have a child. Some of us have many children. No, that's the things you remember. And that's the way to set God before you. If you remember that my child is a blessing from God. It's a gift of God. There's nothing you could have done to have such a lovely child like that. To have such a beautiful child like that. Don't let the devil ever take that away from you. Remember it is a blessing from God. So don't let the devil tell you God has not blessed you. That's how to keep your mind on God. By remembering what God has done before. By remembering the goodness of God in your life. Let me tell you the last thing before we pray. Now look at Joshua again. Look at what they did again. And this is very, very interesting. This is very important. Do you know why Joshua began to pray? In the church. Now don't forget that the multitudes were coming against them. The armies were coming against them. And do, do you know what they did? Look, look at what they did. And then Joshua called the people together and said, all of you, let us go to the house of God. Now, 
The enemies were coming against them. But he said, let us go to the house of God. And they came to church. Hello? Can you imagine that soldiers were coming against them? But they ran to the church. They ran to the house of God. And they began to pray. And they began to remember the greatness of God. They began to remind themselves the goodness of God. What God has done for them. Look at what happened. Why he was doing that. And look at what happened then. The Bible says, look at verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 14. No, I don't want you to miss this. Oh, glory be to God. Glory, hallelujah. I don't want you to miss this at all. Now, the Bible says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. And what did he do? Verse 15. And he began to prophesy. and said, Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid, not dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Verse 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of God. Who is with you? Look at what God told them. God said, don't be afraid. You have done the right thing. You have set me before you. You have fixed your eyes on me. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to defend you. I'm going to give you victory. And do you know what? That is exactly what God did for them. God fought their enemies. Do you know what? The enemy just rose up one day and they began to have quarrel and misunderstanding. And do you know what? They began to kill themselves. We read it in the morning in the passage. They killed themselves. And they left everything that they brought. And Jehoshaphat and the, 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 the people of Judah, the Bible said for four days, they were gathering the spoils of war. But do you know what they did? Why they had, when they had the word of God, the prophecy, they believe it. And do you know what? They just assigned themselves, they positioned themselves, and they began to praise God. Let me read this scripture quickly before we pray. Now look at what Jehoshaphat did. Verse 21. 2 Chronicles 20, 21. And when he had, that is, Joseph consulted with people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out. Now, listen to this. this. This is the cross of my sermon to you this morning. Don't miss this. The Bible says, as they did what? As they went out, verse 21, before the army, as they went out before the army, they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercies endures forever. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Everybody look up. Now, they were going to the battlefield. They didn't have sword. They didn't have gun. They didn't have any, 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 any weapons of war. Do you know what they had? They had trumpets. They had tambourines. And they just had musical instruments. And they were praising God. They were going to the battlefield. The multitude had come against them. And the Bible said, why they were going? They were giving thanks to God. Praise the Lord for his mercies and joy forever. Praise God for his mercies and joy forever. Do you know what they were doing? They were fixing their mind on God. When you thank God, when you praise God, when you remember the goodness of God, it fixes, it, it fixes your mind on God. That's what it does for you. That's what thanks, that's what thanksgiving and praises do for you. It takes your mind away from your problem. So Joseph, they were praising God. The enemies were there in the battlefield, but you know what? They were not thinking about the enemies. They were not thinking about the battle. They were not thinking about the war. They were not thinking about the problem. Because they were thanking God, they were looking up unto God. Now listen to me. That's what you also need to do in life. Don't keep talking about your problem and murmuring and complaining. That does not fix anything. Do you know what? Wake up in the morning and thank the Lord. Lord, thank you because it is not worse than this. It could have been worse than this. You listen to me. But Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because I still have hope. I still have my life. And you listen to me. Thank God, Lord, because I'm still alive. And if you are alive, there is still hope for you. And you listen to me. Your condition is not permanent. When you can thank God, when you can praise God continuously, your mind will be fixed on God constantly. That's what thanksgiving do to you. That's what Joseph and the people did. They thanked the Lord. They were praising God as they were facing their problem. They were facing it, thanking the Lord, fixing their mind on God. And do you know what? God came true for them. I want you to rise to your feet this morning. God, we come true for you also. If you can fix your mind on the Lord, if you can learn to thank the Lord, it does not matter what you are coming against or what is coming against you. Fix your mind on God. Remember God always. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks to God. In everything. In whatever situation you find yourself, the Bible encourages you, give thanks to God. Now, what situation are you in this morning? What is your present circumstances? What are you going through this morning? 
What is it that you are, what is it that is threatening your life? What is it that is coming against you? Now listen to me. Multitudes were coming against Jehoshaphat and the house of Judah. But do you know what? They didn't fix their mind on the multitude. They fixed their mind on God. They were not looking at people and trying to count them and trying to assess them. No. Do you know what? They were looking unto God. How did they do it? They prayed, they fast. They remember the goodness of God and they believe the word of God and they thank God. Before they have the victory, they thank God. Hello? Now listen to me. Don't wait until you get the miracle before you thank God. Thank God while you are still waiting for your miracle. Don't wait until when your marriage is settled, when everything has worked well before you thank God. Thank God now. Thank God when you are marching forward. Thank God when something is coming against you. Are you listening to me? No. Thank God. That's what they did. They marched to the battle, thanking God. They marched to the battle, praising God. They marched to the battle, singing. And do you know what? By the time they got to the battlefield, there was no enemy to fight. Because God has fought them. God has defeated them. That's what God wants to do for you this morning. I want you to look up. I want you to close your eyes this morning. Just for you to concentrate. And then look unto God. Fix your mind on God. The Bible says, set your mind on the things above. That's what the Bible says, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on the things above. This morning, can you try and do that? For once, set your mind. Forget about the issues of life. Forget about challenges. Forget about trials. Your God is above all things. Your God is greater than all things. Now, if you set your mind on the things that you are going through, it will only weigh you down. It will only depress you. It will only discourage you. But this morning, learn to do that. Learn to do that. Learn to send your mind on God. Learn to fix your eyes on God. Learn to const constantly trust in God. That's what Joshua did. That's what David did. You also can do it. It doesn't matter what is coming against you. It doesn't matter what you are coming against. If you can lift up your eyes and say, I'm not fixing it on the problem. I'm not going to sit down here and be thinking and thinking about my problem. What will happen next? What will happen after this? No. I'm going to think on God's goodness. I'm going to think on what God has done before. I'm going to think on the goodness and the greatness of God. Listen to me. God will fight for you. God will come through for you. He will perform miracles in your life. This morning, I want to say, Lord, I receive your help this morning. Lord, I receive this. Say, Father, I receive your grace this morning. I receive help this morning to fix my mind on you, to set you always before me. Lord, like David, like Joshua, I want to set the Lord always before me. Oh, thank you, Lord. I want to set the Lord always before me. I'm going to take my mind off this problem. I'm not going to keep on thinking and meditating on this problem, on these trials, on this challenge, on this difficulty. But I'm going to think on the goodness of God. I'm going to think on the love of God. I'm going to think on the greatness of God. Lord, help me this morning. Oh, help me this morning, Lord. Help me this morning, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you know that your God is greater? He's greater. God is greater than whatever situation you are going through. God is bigger than what you are asking him for. Whatever you are asking God for, God is much more than that. He's bigger than that. Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God over all the nation. He's a mighty God. This morning, let God know you are trusting. Say, Lord, I am trusting you. Lord, I am fixing my eyes on you. I set you before me, Lord. I know you will come true for me. I know you will help me. I know you will change my situation. I know you will change my life. I know things will not remain the same. I trust in God this morning. I choose to trust you, Lord. I choose to fix my eyes on you this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org UK. This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, 
please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.